Now we come to the Gospel, which is John 6, 60 to 69. That is, all but the last two or three verses of chapter 6. And it's the call to discipleship. Jesus is saying, eat me, drink me, live by me. And they're saying, hey, that's too much. That's too much. No, I'm, you know, you're a good teacher. I'd like to hang around with you and learn a lot, you know. But uh, this is too radical. My friends, by the mercy of God, we're all being forced to be radical again. Everybody in the world thinks we're nuts, you know. And the government's dreaming one way, or one way or another to harass us. And that's nothing compared to what's going on in countries where they're in jail. And so, uh, you see, the text is saying uh, all that to us. So, many from his disciples hearing this said, this word is hard. And there, we get multiple sclerosis from that word. Sclerosis. Uh, who can listen to it? What's the word? Feed on me. Feed on my word. Feed on my eyes. Feed on my love for you. Feed on my body. Feed on my blood. Feed on me. That's how much I love you. That's, that's too far. That's, you know, I don't mind listening to you. You're a really good teacher. I'll pick up some good points and try to live them out. That's too much. Now do you see how to really be a Christian, you've got to be a little bit nuts? You've got to love Jesus and give your whole life to him. And if we don't finish the job here, that'll be what goes on in purgatory, when we will see the real nature of our sins. Terrifying. We offended God. But we'll see them in the light that comes from Jesus' eyes. And we will be so overwhelmed by his mercy. In this life, that's the gift of tears. In the next life, it's the fire of re repentance that purifies us. Okay? So we can practice in this life and then save a lot of time. Um, Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were murmuring about this, said to them, this is a challenge, you see. Is this an offense to you? If then you should see the Son of Man going up where he was before, and the sentence just drifts off. Because Jesus has been telling them all throughout the Gospel, I am the Son of Man. Come down from heaven. The very first promise was back there, you remember, to Nathaniel. Uh, you shall see greater things, Nathaniel, than that. You shall see the heavens open and the angels of God descending and ascending on the Son of Man. Well, the vision of, of Jacob was to the place of that was going to be the temple at Bethel. But now he's saying, I'm the temple. I'm the temple. Now, the Son of Man going up so that he's totally divinized. Oh, did you ever try to figure out, that's the right word, what's the Eucharist all about, huh? How can he feed us like this for millennia, millennia? How can he do this? Because his body has been divinized. And that is the mystery of the ascension. The patronal feast for the liturgy is the ascension. And when we get to the ascension, we'll talk about it. But, uh, uh, see, it is the spirit which gives life. The flesh is worth nothing. He means the flesh is not worth nothing, my goodness. You know, we can do great things with it. I mean, Jesus died in his flesh, that's why we're saved. It just means if you take the word flesh to mean basar, human effort, human nature, human, it's a zip. You can't get yourself to heaven. You can't even believe what I'm telling you. You can't even believe what I'm telling you unless the Holy Spirit moves you. You realize that? You think you're doing God a favor when you believe? You're yielding to a work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you're not, I mean, he's very thrilled you're doing it, but you're not doing him a favor. If you, if you refuse to believe, who's going to be the loser? You or God? Okay. The words which I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. He goes back to the words before he goes to the flesh. You see that? Because the words 
are part of his flesh. You know, we eat those words. Just like Ezekiel ate the scroll. And we've seen that. You know? Uh, that whole thing about the Christ present in the Eucharist and in the preached word. Analogously. Okay. The words I have spoken are spirit and life, but there are some among you who do not believe. And what would believe there mean? If I told you that I used to live, oh, I lived five years in Israel, you can say, I don't believe you. Well, it looks, listen to me talk Hebrew, or I can tell you what Jerusalem looks like, or, you know. Uh, I can't move you from inside to believe me. And besides, my presence or absence in Jerusalem is kind of trivial. But what Jesus is telling us is eternal life. And uh, he, he moves us. Remember all those things we did at the beginning? He is the Word. He's the divine, the Word of God, which is sharper than any, is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's Jesus. He moves us to believe. The Spirit is moving us and we are yielding. Uh, the secret of uh, a, a fervent Christian life is yielding. The movement, the power, comes from the Holy Spirit. And it gets into us, you see, that power through the Eucharist. Then we're identified with Jesus. His heart is beating in union with our heart and trying to move us so that we're just polarized by the Father. You see? Then John explains, Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who was going to hand him over. Because of this, he said, he said, because of this, I have said to you, and for the last time, we have this basic principle that I just enunciated. No one can come to me unless it be given him by my Father. You think you're doing Jesus a favor when you believe? You're yielding to the work of the Father in you through the Holy Spirit, bringing you out of hell into heaven. You're not doing anybody a favor except yourself. But what a favor. Because as we grow, what happens? We get to know Jesus and the Father and the Spirit. And we love them. And we know that they love us. You see? And so, Jesus is trying to give him one last chance. You see? See, I know that you don't because no one can come to me unless it's been given him by my Father. You remember how many times uh, John says that in this discourse. You know, the very first one. What shall we do to do the works of God in the plural? And Jesus' answer, this is the work, one work of God. It's the one work that God the Father does in you, that you believe in the one whom he sent. That's the work. And God, does, what's our job? To yield to it. We can put an obstacle up to that, you see? Uh, which is just happening now. From that point on, many of his disciples turned back and walked with him no longer. Now we come to the crucial thing and the, the, uh, why they put Joshua as our first reading. Commitment. Then Jesus said to the twelve, And do you wish to go off? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and come to know. You notice? Believe and come to know. Belief we yield, and as we yield to Jesus, we know him. That's why you have to practice every day praying, so we really get to know him. I've told you this story a hundred times, but a reporter or somebody asked Mrs. Einstein, Mrs. Einstein, do you know Dr. Einstein's theory? She said, no, but I know Dr. Einstein. See, that's what he's talking about here. You see? Uh, um, so then he turns to the twelve. And do you wish to go off? Simon Peter, God bless him, he makes lots of mistakes, but his faith is there, you know? Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Every time you speak, my spirit just takes life. You have these words. Now you remember what we said at the beginning about a word, you see? 
our words can share in his word and give life to each other. And especially for the preachers, you see, our words can give life. Because in every word we speak, there is the word. We just saw all that. And, uh, you know, you want to hear it again, what Aquinas said? If I can find it, yep, there it is. In the same way, the absolute word, by participation, is in, uh, as, and by that, all who have a word are said to be speaking. This is the divine word, which in himself is the word raised above all. So, if we're not just talking about whatever, with, and the word is the word, but we're talking about Christ, talking about the Father, it is the word that we're delivering. A share, a participation in the word. That's what he's saying here, you see. So Simon Peter says, well, where shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And then it says just one more line, uh, and he, this all happened in the Capernaum in the synagogue after they came back across the lake. So we've taken many weeks now uh, to feed on the Word and on the Eucharist at Mass. We went all the way through chapter 6 of John and that was our lodestar, that was our... And then we had a, a, a text at the beginning which threw light on that John text, the multiplication, the walking on the water, the discourse, the interaction, which in some kind commentators tell us is modeled on a on a synagogue discussion, sort of. Okay? And then finally, the words of our Lord at the end. Not only is he wisdom for us, he's our physical food. That's how much he loves us. And so we have finished that. But you know, we finish on a note of commitment. Are you going to walk away too? Well, you know, he knew one of them was going to walk away, not then, but later. Uh, so you see, as things get more, as there's more opposition to being Catholic, you know, or just being Christian, we're going to have to make up our minds. And we better practice now. Though the Lord will be there, no matter, we can be a disaster. I remember this bishop who had been in a Chinese prison camp for 15 years, I think it was. And he was home, you know, he was out and he was home and he was talking to us. And he said, there was a guy there in, the, in that village where I lived, you know, and he was, he was sub-zero when it came to practice, you know. Uh, and I prayed for him. He said, all I used to worry about him. Well, I stood at my door one day, I think it was the Red... Uh, not the Red Brigade, whatever they used to call that group. Anyway, and there he was, there was a rope around his neck, and they were leading him off. And he hollered out as he went by my house, Tell the bishop, I'm okay, I'm going now to give my life for Christ. Isn't that great? So the Lord never gives up on us, is the point I'm making, you see? So, we've ended now this discourse, we should never forget it. The Word of God the Son of God, saying, I am the word of your mind, I am the flesh of your flesh, and I want to bring you to eternal life.